Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 207, James in a Jam. Come on, metalhead, laughed Lori 3 one morning. I've seen little steam engines work faster than you, and that's saying something. Be quiet down there, shouted Cranky. If you can't wait for me to unload this package, then go ahead and leave without it. I don't care. Fine then, it's your decision. Have fun getting that cargo to the quarry by yourself. Ha ha ha! And Lorry 3 roared loudly away. What terrible vehicles, said Salty. I can't believe I ever endorsed them, sighed Cranky. James was infuriated. They're absolutely dreadful, he agreed. I thought they only treated me poorly because I was a steam engine. But this just shows that they're plain awful to everyone. It's about time somebody put them in their place. Lower that cargo down here, Cranky. Looks like I'll have to take it to the quarry instead. No, let me do it, insisted James. I want to go find something out. James didn't normally like pulling trucks, but he was curious as to what the cargo was being used for at the quarry. It's more building equipment, said Marion, but the shipment should be stopping soon. We've cleared the line all the way to the top of the mountain, and we won't be needing any more supplies. So you're basically done blasting now? asked James. We're getting close, replied Boko. Of course, the quarry will still be mining rock and removing precious finds, but we won't be needing any more dynamite. So what are the lorries going to do when that happens? What are they going to deliver instead? Who knows, said Marion, but that will be the day. I'm a pretty optimistic steam shovel, and even they are getting on my nerves. This revelation of events made James curious. He spoke to the other engines that night at the sheds. Boko and Marion say they won't be needing any more of Sailor John's dynamite, he told them. So what are the lorries going to do instead? Maybe they'll deliver something else, said Edward. I'm sure the docks is always going to need help in that area. But Cranky and Salty don't want their help, replied Percy. I was just there the other day. Both of them can't stand the lorries. And any Sodor company won't work with them, added Toby. Sir Topham Hat won't let that happen. He doesn't like them either. So Sailor John is the only one protecting the lorries, murmured James. He gives them delivery so they stay busy. But if the quarry doesn't need more dynamite, then the delivery stop, finished Thomas. You might be on to something, James. What do you think, Gordon? All I know is that I have to pull the express in the morning, and you all are keeping me awake, he grumbled. The engines realized that it might be time to go to sleep. I won't let this go unsolved, whispered James. I'll do some more searching tomorrow morning. And James did just that. He arranged for Edward to take his trains while he puffed up the coast to Arlesburg Harbor. There was the dynamite stand still packed to the brim as ever. Interesting. Sailor John is still making loads of dynamite, even though he knows that the quarry isn't going to need it. What is he planning? Oh, hello, James, said Oliver. What are you doing up here in Arlesburg? I'm looking for Sailor John, he replied. You haven't seen him snooping around, have you? Oliver couldn't help but laugh. Nobody's seen that pirate in a very long time. And believe me, if I had seen him, I would have told Sir Topham Hat right away. But your guess is as good as mine. Come to think of it, I haven't seen that little boat that he used to ride around either. James was growing more and more interested. If he couldn't find Sailor John on his own, then he would have to pull him out of hiding. That afternoon, he traveled back down to Wellsworth to see Sir Topham Hat. Sir, I have a bit of a strange idea. What if I were to pull the official Sodor dynamite train? Sir Topham Hat was a bit confused. 
Well, James, I had no idea you were so interested in dynamite. But if you're willing to give up your coaches for such a measly alternative, then you must feel very strongly about this cause. James gritted his teeth. Yes, this matters more to me than my coaches, he said achingly. Very well, then. It hadn't occurred to me, but if we were to start our own train from the dynamite stand to the quarry, we could bypass those lorries and put them out of business. See, it's a win-win for all, said James enthusiastically. That settles it, then. You have my permission to start this in the morning. I'll telephone the dynamite factory about these changes, and hopefully we'll get a response from that sailor man himself. James whistled and puffed happily away. That night, he shunted three empty cars in front of the dynamite stand. These better be full when I return tomorrow morning, he shouted loudly. I know you can hear me, Sailor John. Come out, come out, wherever you are. And James left to go get some rest. Behind the dynamite stand, Sailor John and George peeked out into the darkness. So, they want to try to get rid of me lorries, huh? We'll see about that. You know what to do, George. The next morning, when James returned, he was surprised to see that the cars were indeed full and ready to go. This is a good start, he said happily. Maybe we're finally getting somewhere with this delusional pirate after all. And he quickly set off. The first part of the journey was normal, and James was making good time. But as soon as he passed through Natford, things took a turn for the worse. One of the lorries was blocking James's path on the main line. Look out! he cried, and he hastily veered on to the other track. Another lorry had triggered the coaling system, and there was coal all over the rails. James smashed into it, and then he hit a lone cranberry car that sent him spilling off the line and into a field. His train of dynamite was wrecked. My poor paint, cried James sadly. This coal and jam are never going to come off. Serves you right, came a distinct voice. There, standing before James in the field, was Sailor John. What are you doing here? gasped James. Oh, you were expecting me. I bet you had this planned all along. George, he called. Do it now. And George the steamroller rolled up to one of the spill crates of dynamite. You're going to be an example to Sir Topham Hatt and anyone else that stands in my way, he continued. George's roller here emits extreme heat when he's been moving along at top speed. As soon as he touches one of the fuses there, this whole train is going to light up. James's eyes widened in fear. Help! Help! he called. He's going to blow me up! Somebody come quickly! No need to overreact, James, came Harvey's voice. I'm almost there. Shiver me timbers. It's another engine. Get out of here, George, and don't be spotted. And the two quickly vanished into the open field. James was both shocked and relieved at his good fortune. Later that day, when Sir Topham had arrived, James told him everything. Well, at least we have an eyewitness account of the disaster, he said. It's unfortunate how this happened, James, but you were right. This dynamite stand did bring Sailor John out of hiding. Now if we could only figure out where he ran off to. But for the time being, James didn't care about any of that. He was just happy that his friends had come to his rescue. And that he was still in one piece, of course.